Welcome to lecture 3, solving a system of linear equations. We're still using the text Elementary Linear Algebra 7th edition by Ron Larson. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. Okay, so let's look at the following example. Look at the equation to your left. It looks really complex. Look at the equation to the right. Now I want us to solve both equations. Which one do you think would be easier to solve? Look at the equation to the right. It's in a step format. If I use back substitution, all I have to do is, uh, I already know that z equals 2. If I go up to equation 2, I can substitute for z and solve for y. If I go up to equation 1, I can use the value for z and y that I already know and solve for x. Very easy. That's called back substitution. As a matter of fact, this equation is in the format that's known as the row echelon form. And we get there using Gaussian elimination. What about um, this equation right here? Well, it may look really complex, but our target today and uh, throughout this class would be to convert systems like this to become like the one on the right hand side. How could we transform this to look like this? The process is known as Gaussian elimination and that is what we would be doing in this class. But before we get there, let's recall what we did mention in uh, lecture 2 as operations that produce equivalent systems. Number one would be to interchange two rows or two equations. Number two, to multiply an equation by a non-zero constant. And three, to add a multiple of an equation to another equation. So any of these three operations performed on the system would not change the system. And we would be using that uh, in this class. Okay, let's go on to those examples we have just looked at. Okay, technology should work, hopefully. Very good. Now, these are the two examples. So, this is the first equation that looked really complex. And this is the second equation in a stepwise format. Uh, we're going to call this row 1, row 2, row 3. Similarly, row 1, row 2, row 3. Since I did mention that uh, the second equation or the equation to the right was easier to solve, we would go ahead and solve that equation first. Now, starting from row 3, we know that z equals 2. So if I were to substitute for z in row 2, I end up with y equals 5 minus 3z, i.e., y equals 5 minus 3 times 2, and that should give me negative 1. Now, I know the answer or the value for y, the value for z. I can substitute both in row 1 or equation 1, and I end up with x equals 9 plus 2y minus 3z equals 1. Now, my solution set is x equals 1, y equals negative 1, and z equals 2. Very easy. So once I have a system in this form, which I had uh, mentioned before, this form is known as the row echelon form. It's very easy to solve the system. We do that by back substitution. Now, what about the system to your left? Is there a relationship between this system and the system to your right? As a matter of fact, these are equivalent systems, exactly the same system. So what do we do? We are going to convert the system to your left to look exactly like the system to the right using Gaussian elimination. Now, in Gaussian elimination, it is recommended that the coefficient of the first term be equal to 1. And so here the coefficient is 1, so we're good to go. Okay, so I do not have to do anything to row 1. So row 1 is going to stay exactly as it is. Now, I want to get rid of this x right here. So what do I do? 
I add row 1 and row 2, that would give me a 0 right here. I don't care very much what y would look like. That's not my target. My target is x. So I add row 1 and row 2 and leave my answer in row 2. So that would give me row 1 exactly as it is. And the new row 2 becomes y plus 3z equals 5. And row 3 stays exactly the same. Now we could have also reduced uh, row 3 in that first operation, but being our first example, we're going to go very slowly. Now let's come over here and take care of row 3. If I multiply row 1 by negative 2 and add that to row 3, you see that I'm going to get rid of x. Okay, so let's do that. So negative 2 row 1 plus row 3, leave the answer in row 3. My x stays exactly the same. Y is, uh, row 2 does not change here. Row 1 doesn't change. And I'm multiplying negative 2 row 1 plus row 3. You see here, that would give me a 0. I really don't care much uh, about y and z. We'll take care of those uh, in another time. Okay, so taking care of this, we would have row 3 would be negative y minus z equals negative 1. So that is our new row 3. We now have a new row 1, a new row 2, a new row 3. Look at our step format. We love this y, but over here, we don't like any y. So how do we get rid of this y? If I add row 2 and row 3, and leave the answer in row 3, this becomes 0. So row 2 plus row 3, leave the answer in row 3. That gives us uh, row 1 exactly as it's always been from the beginning, our new row 2, and I end up with 2z equals 4. We could skip a few steps, but being the first example, let's go very slowly. Okay, so now we take one half row three leave the answer in row three that gives us our row one our row two our row three and that is our reduced echelon form or let's say our row echelon form now that i've mentioned the word reduce let me just go ahead and say something about it uh, let me use pink here for the ladies okay our ultimate target would be to reduce the system to what is known as reduced row echelon form. And uh, we would play with this some more when time comes. For now, let's just relax and stay with the row echelon form. Okay. Now, let's uh, look at another example. Remember, I had mentioned before that given a system of linear equations there are a couple of things that we can do or there are a couple of outcomes that we can have uh, from that system it could be consistent with a unique solution like what we've just seen it could be consistent with infinitely many solutions or it could be an inconsistent system with no solution so we're going to touch each of these now look at this second system. Whenever you're given a system like this to solve, the first thing you want to do is attempt to reduce this to a row echelon form and use back substitution. Now attempting that, we want to get rid of this, uh, well, our coefficient here is 1, so that's good. We're happy. So we want to get rid of this x1. You see that if I multiply row 1 by negative 2 and add to row 2, I would get rid of x1. Here, if I multiply row 1 by negative 1 and add to row 3, I will get rid of this x1. So why not perform both operations at the same time? And I end up with this new system. Remember, this system is exactly the same like the first system because what we have just done is perform elementary operations, i.e. operations that do not change the system. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is eliminate x2 from row 3 so I can have my stepwise system and use back substitution. 
so i multiply this new row 2 by negative 1 and add to row 3 that will get rid of negative 5x2 so here we have negative r2 plus r3 put the answer in row 3 and that leads me to 0 equals negative 2 which is always false so we conclude that the system has no solution or it is an inconsistent system okay let's look at another example we have here x2 minus x3 equals 0 row 1 x1 minus 3 x3 equals negative 1 row 2 and negative x1 plus 3 x2 equals 1 that's row 3 okay look at row 1 there is no x1 so my step system is not going to work really well so i need an x1 here so my very first step would be to create an x1 not really create put one there one way or the other now the quickest way to do that would be to interchange row 1 and row 2 remember that operation does not change the system so if i interchange row 1 and row 2 that gives me my new system that's my new row 1 uh, let's use pink and um, call it our new row 1 that is our new row 2 and that is our new row 3 okay let's do that very good now if i add row 1 plus row 3 and put the answer in row 3 i get rid of this x1 there is no x1 in row 2 so we're good now if i do that operation i end up with this new system which is exactly the same as our original system because these are elementary operations now to get rid of this x2 from row 3 if i multiply row 2 by negative 3 and add that to row 3 this will get rid of my x2 from row 3 remember what we're doing gaussian elimination so we can use back substitution so if I perform that operation, I end up with x1 minus 3, x3 equals negative 1, x2 minus x3 equals 0, and 0 equals 0. Now, the new row 3, remember this is uh, uh, row 1 right here, and that's uh, row 2, and that's uh, row 3 right there. So r3 is true for every x1 x2 x3 in r so the third row is always true so from row 2 we have that x2 equals x3 and from row 1 we have that x1 equals negative 1 plus 3 x3 so x3 is a free variable if we set x3 to be some parameter t then we end up with a parametric representation of the solution set x1 equals negative 1 plus 3t, x2 equals t, and x3 equals t, where t is a real number. So we say the system has infinitely many solutions. You see here that the big, the big thing, the big news uh, for this lecture has been to convert a system to row echelon form. You feel like trying a system on your own? Now look at the following example. Well, I decided to add some zeros just to make the system look good and free it from so many empty spaces. So the first equation is x plus 3 omega equals 4, 2y minus z minus omega equals 0, 3y minus 2 omega equals 1, 2x minus y plus 4z equals 5. Now I want you to solve this system, uh, first of all, by reducing it to a row echelon form and then use back substitution. Enjoy. <laughs>